Rocket League has a closer relationship to traditional sports than any other esport in the world. Soccer, or football, is what it's most often compared to because it's a very simple concept on the surface. There's a ball, two goals on opposite ends, and the objective of each team is to put that ball in the opponent's goal. Do that more than your opponent after a certain time limit, and you win the game. It's very easy to follow on a surface level, even if you've never played it before. But obviously, Rocket League still differs from soccer or football because there's no such thing as penalties, there's an entire new dimension with the ability to fly, and the field is generally much smaller and contains less players. There are obviously many more differences between the two, but those are a few of the main things you need to know in order to get a grasp on the basics of Rocket League. Although Rocket League gets pretty deep the more you get into it, you don't actually need to play it yourself in order to appreciate it. The same way people enjoy watching the NFL, NBA, or MLB, you could enjoy watching professional Rocket League as well. So today, I'm sharing with you some of the details that make Rocket League one of the most entertaining and competitive esports in the world. Starting with movement. Perhaps the most beautiful thing about Rocket League that separates it from all other esports is its free-form nature. Instead of a single player being in control of their entire team, like in Madden or FIFA, one player is in control of one car and can maneuver that car in any way possible. On the ground, a Rocket League car works the same as a normal car. There's a gas button, steering, brakes, reverse, and also a power slide button for sharp turns, and finally, a boost button that makes the car gain speed faster. But that can only be used as long as your boost tank isn't empty, which can be filled up by grabbing various boost pads around the field. Where a Rocket League car really differs from a normal car is its ability to fly. Of course, there is also a jump button. If a player presses jump once, for a short time in the air, they can press jump again for a double jump. Or instead of a double jump, they can dodge or flip in any direction. Forward, backward, left, right, diagonal, whichever they please. While in the air, a Rocket League car can turn, tilt, or roll on any axis at once. Combining a roll with a tilt, for example, gives the car a whole new movement. Now combine any of these movements with a boost button, and a player can now control their car as they fly through the air. At least until they run out of boost and need to collect some more. All of these options for movements on the ground and in the air come together to give a player complete control over their vehicle in a match. The same way a soccer player has complete control over their human body. Moving all the proper joints and muscles in a person's body, bending a knee, extending a leg, and following through for a big kick is equivalent in Rocket League to steering, jumping, rolling, and then flipping precisely to give a ball the exact power and placement it needs to get past a defender and find the back of the net. With all this freeform ability, players have found combinations of movements that allow them to strike the ball in particular ways that are most effective. These different ways of hitting the ball are called mechanics, and there are a multitude of different mechanics or moves that a player can do in Rocket League. For example, a player can drive in a way that balances the ball on top of their car. This is, of course, called dribbling. And from there, they can do a mechanic called a flick, which is where they jump, roll their car a little bit accordingly, and then flip in a particular direction to launch the ball away. It's the exact equivalent to dribbling the ball with your feet and then passing it or shooting it in real soccer. This mechanic, just like most in Rocket League, takes a huge amount of hours of practice to get comfortable with. Players that first try to learn this mechanic usually struggle for hours before they see progress. But just like with anything in a real sport, improvement comes with time and plenty of practice. And after enough of it with a bunch of different mechanics, players start to develop their skill set and repertoire of moves they can pull out in any scenario. Meanwhile, defenses practice the same thing, but instead on the opposite end of trying to read what move the opponents are going to do in order to shut it down with ease. It quickly becomes a back and forth battle of the offense choosing which attack to use while the defense tries to predict which one it is. All of this individual outplay potential is great, but it doesn't exactly work without a foundational positioning strategy as a team of three that allows for these deadly positions to be created. So how exactly do teams work to set up scoring opportunities like these? Optimal positioning in Rocket League is surprisingly quite different from soccer, despite being a very similar game on the surface. As many of you may know, in soccer, each team has designated position players, meaning if someone is playing left back, they're going to stay generally in that zone all game. They're not going to push way up to the top right corner at any point. This is actually pretty similar to how Rocket League positioning began. It seems to make sense, you just delegate each player to being in charge of a certain zone in the field. Many of the top teams in the world during the early months of Rocket League actually had a strategy similar to this. 
But as the game evolved throughout the first year, it was quickly revealed that the position player strategy doesn't work nearly as well as others. While the concept of the game is very similar to soccer, the optimal strategy is very different. One of the biggest issues with having fixed position players in Rocket League is the fact that there are only three players on each team. In soccer, there's 11. So it's totally fine to have some players sitting back out of the play and waiting their turn to help out. But in Rocket League, there's no extra players to spare. Everyone on the team should be as productive as possible at all times. So if the ball was over in that top right corner, under this position player strategy, that one player would be responsible for committing to the ball over and over again until it finally left that zone that they were in charge of while the other two players just do nothing and wait their turn. Obviously, that's just ridiculous and very inefficient. Fortunately, there is a strategy that solves this issue, and it's exactly the foundation of what professional Rocket League players use today. That solution is what's known as rotation. You see, in Rocket League, there are actually still positions on the field, but they're looked at way differently than positions in traditional sports. In Rocket League, we call them first man, second man, and third man, ranked most often by how far up the field they're positioned. But instead of having each player pick a position and stick to it for the entirety of the match, as a team, they rotate between these positions every few seconds, which is exactly where the term rotation comes from. The fact that the players are rotating between these positions means that they're almost always keeping their momentum going. And every time they rotate back, it gives them just enough free time to grab boost so they can be even more productive in the play by the time it's their turn to be first in line again. Under this rotation strategy, a team is able to keep constant pressure and always have someone ready to go for the ball under ideal conditions. But conditions aren't always ideal because sometimes teams will have a player purposely steal the opponent's boost or bump a player out of rotation to disrupt their flow and create a scoring opportunity. Rocket League positioning as a whole boils down to a five minute sequence of free flowing action and reaction, attack and counter and the team that has better communication, individual mechanical skill, and overall chemistry and rotation in a given match is the team that comes out on top at the end of that five minutes. Let's break down a specific play in detail. Here, we have two of the best Rocket League teams in the world. In this situation, we have a classic two versus one scenario. Two attackers and one defender. One attacker has possession of the ball, while the other is trying to make themselves available for a pass. The defender, on the other hand, is left all alone to stop this play from a disadvantaged position. It's developing so fast that everyone else other than these three players might as well be completely disregarded for the current moment. What the attacker with the ball does next is brilliant. Within a split second, he's already made up his mind for what he's about to do. He continues to take the ball upfield and immediately steers his car to be positioned on the outside of the ball. That way, he can easily pass it to his teammate infield if he wants to by side flipping into it. Seeing this, the defender immediately starts turning in the direction of the other opponent that's open for the pass to try and cover that option. At the same time, the attacker with the ball begins boosting and cutting in toward the ball, exactly as if he's going to pass it. So the defender fully commits to cutting it off by backflipping at the perfect time. It seems like he's about to shut down this play successfully, but this is actually exactly what the attacker wanted in this situation. What he's just done to the defender is a textbook example of a fake. After the defender backflips, he immediately stops cutting into the ball and lets it continue to roll on its original path. This of course puts the last remaining defender completely out of the play. So to finish it off, he now finally passes it for real and allows his teammate to finish off the open goal. All this quick thinking, decision making, action and reaction happens within seconds and it's why these teams are some of the best in the world. This is the level of mechanical skill and quick thinking it takes to score against defenses that are so accustomed to every type of attack. There are so many layers that go into such a simple objective, and it's exactly the reason why people all over the world gather around to watch the best of the best compete in something as basic as car soccer. The best place to watch the highest level of Rocket League is what's known as the RLCS, the Rocket League Championship Series. Essentially the same thing as the MLB or NFL, but for Rocket League. Here at the website twitch.tv slash Rocket League, we see the best teams in the world battle it out in a series of events over the course of a year-long season. Throughout that season are a collection of online tournaments and occasional in-person tournaments where fans of the game across the globe come together in one place to appreciate the esport and cheer for their favorite professional team. Each team has their own backstory and community of fans that support them at each event. The players are characters in that ongoing story that takes place over the course of either months or even years for some. One of the best ways to get into watching the RLCS is by watching one of these events live. 
Seeing the crowd start chants and roar during intense moments is something truly special, especially when you understand the gravity of the situation for everyone involved. To the players, coaches, managers, and so many others, Rocket League is everything. Day in and day out, professional players spend thousands of hours grinding their skills to make themselves the best in the world. Coaches spend that time studying, building game plans, and working directly with their teams to give them the best chance at dominating the competition. The team as a whole keeps track of everything as broad as their relationship with their parent organization, all the way down to their team chemistry and the most effective way to put that ball in the back of the net. When so many teams are putting in so much time and effort into what they do, they're bound to each have an incredible backstory to how they got to where they are in present time. And when you have all these storylines with each individual team clashing at a single tournament in one spot on the planet, the result is bound to be something extraordinary. But only one can come out as champion. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. I spent an incredibly long time making this video. I went through so many versions of this script and talked with so many people who don't play Rocket League in order to make it the best that it can be. So hopefully it came out well. The purpose of it is for it to be shared with people you know that don't necessarily understand Rocket League or RLCS on a deeper level. I personally always have such a hard time explaining to my friends or family why it is I'm so passionate about what I do. So I wanted to make this video as kind of a community resource to help solve that issue. Cause I'm sure so many of you guys go through that exact same experience that I do. So that's about it. Thank you again so much for watching and have a great day.